Hello, uh, I've been away for a while. I think for the past two weeks or so, I've been on research leave and also uh, I've been busy at weekends. I've been uh, I'm moving house. Uh, so there's a lot of boxes to carry and a lot of boxes to pack and unpack. Anyway, I'm back now. Um, so, so far, we the, the last video I did was on translation. Um, um, the next topics will be um, as seen here the genetic code and um, and also after that mutation in genetic code I think I mentioned this in class uh, that the um, experiments on how they decipher will not be the focus of uh, this course uh, we're, we're good if you uh, are still studying genetics then we'll see that in the second year so in the first year we, we're just going to look at the very basics of the code itself and maybe one or two principles on how they discovered the uh, how they cracked the genetic code. So basically, um, we know that information goes from DNA to mRNA and then from mRNA to translation into amino acid. And the code, uh, if you if you want to look back again, you need to understand what is the coding sequence. Uh, this is also the send strand this is also the bit that can be uh, translated if you look at the codon table right uh, so these are the, the sequence when you read you can actually translate that sequence into amino acids so there are some properties um, of, of genetic code and these properties are quite universal by universal me i mean the same rules apply to the smallest of organisms like the viruses like the uh, the bacteria to as to as largest to the largest animals like the whale and the elephant they use the same codes there are some exceptions uh, like for example the mitochondria of humans have different um, uh, stop codons and things like that but but in general uh, the codes are universal the same code is used for bacteria and the same codes are actually used for the whale that's why we can clone um, across different species so some characteristics of the code it says is composed of triplets remember the um, uh, the bases are made of four bases a t g and c from these four bases you need to translate into about 20 amino acids so how do four bases code into 20 amino acids so we know we now know that it's in triplets in the next slide, we're going to look at what we call as the coding ratio, um, but never mind. So it's composed of triplets. So every time you read, you read three bases. You can read the three of the same bases or different bases. It can be AAA or ATG or ACA and things like that. All right. It's non-overlapping. When you start from the first base, one, two, three, one, two, three, it goes on and on and on and on. It doesn't skip. It doesn't overlap. Like for example, you start one, two, three. One, two, three, and then you'll start with two, three, one, and no, it doesn't do that. So once you start, then it goes continuously in a non-overlapping. It doesn't have any pauses. That means you just start code from the start codon, for example, ATG, mostly ATG, and then you'll go into the uh, stop codon. There's no breaks in between. There's no pauses. It's degenerate. What is degenerate, we'll see later. But basically, it means that if you have four bases, you can make 64 triplet, triplet codes, right? Each letter A, each, each in a triplet, right? One, two, three. Each position can be filled by four bases, correct? This one, the first one could be an A or a T or a C or a G. The second one can either be a T or a C, A or a T or a C or a G. The third one can also be A, T, C, G. So there are four options for each slot. So four times 4 times 4 that's why you get 64 so there are 64 possible combinations but 64 com possible combinations you only want to code for 20 amino acid so you'll find that some uh, codons are degenerate for example CCA and CCT and CCC and CCG they all code for proline right but it's not the same for all it doesn't apply to all amino acids. For example, methionine, ATG, there's only one code. All right? So we'll, when we look at the codon table, you'll see the, what, 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 what I mean. Collinearity between DNA sequence, mRNA, and 
the sequence of the DNA will, will be copied. It makes the mRNA, and from the mRNA, it makes the uh, amino acid. There is collinearity, that is, if there is a change in the DNA that is being copied, of course, you'll see the same change in mRNA. And because the mRNA is changed, well, obviously, the amino acid will also change. Well, that depends, right? But there is collinearity. One is determined, one determines the other. The mRNA, the DNA will determine the mRNA, the mRNA will determine the amino acid. And this is why I said about almost universal. Um, Okay, it says exceptions. UGA uh, is normally in the normal cells, it's a stop codon, but uh, it codes for tryptophan in mitochondria. Mostly you'll see this in the mitochondria. But uh, at this stage, you'll just say, you know, the codes are universal. Okay. Um, so this, these are uh, just titles. Uh, I will not go into this. If I have time, I probably will. But these are some of the experiments that are uh, being done by uh, to to understand how do the DNA code for amino acid? You know that this is deciphering the genetic code. Uh, this is um, collinearity. The slide that talks about collinearity. You have um, uh, linear order from A C G T will determine A C G U, and then you know there's this is relationship. And this is was first shown by Garrett. Uh, Archibald Garrett, who is a biochemist, a doctor, a biochemist, who showed that uh, uh, mutations or enzymes causes diseases. So that was the first one. But never mind about that. Don't worry. But m important thing for you to remember, or in this case, is this: this is what the central dogma is about. I mean, the 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 process or the flow of information goes from DNA to mRNA, and then from mRNA to proteins. Um, this slide, before we go into the codon table, here's the slide on genetic code and here it mentions coding ratio. I mentioned that earlier. So what it means is that, as I said, you have four bases and how does it determine 20 amino acids? Um, if four bases, if each of the base is a code for one amino acid, so that means you can only do four amino acids, so that's not enough. If two of the bases, coding ratio is two, that means Every time uh, you every time you want to code, you use two bases, so it's as an AA, AT, eh, or AG, or AC. So that that will give you uh, sixteen four to the power four. Yes, sixteen codes. Again, that's not enough for for twenty amino acids. It's it is only when the coding uh, ratio is three. That means four times four times four. Then you get sixty four. It's it's a bit more than you need, but that would be uh, the minimum because coding ratio to you only have 16 codes which is not sufficient which is not enough for 20 i hope you get that if you don't let me know so i'll just uh, do this thing again all right now i'm gonna stop here for now and i will continue in the next video bye bye